Parental discretion is advised. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 478. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, ready to rock this ish uh, here tonight with me from Poughkeepsie, New York. He's a former employee of WWE Corporate uh, in Stanford. <laughs> Mad Mike. I am a former employee of WWE Corporate. That's Sorg. your qualification. I mean, I mean, last week we had people that were commentators. We had people that work in the newspaper business. We have people that uh, uh, who was the other one? Uh, uh, you know, we, we have people that like like are doing other things, have blogs and such. You work there at I the home got base. Future endeavor. We don't there, say so that. Like, we don't say that enough. Just like we don't name drop Zach Gowan enough on this show. And Eric Young. And Eric Young. <laughs> but anyways, uh, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing all right, Sorg. I just got finished live tweeting Tough Enough. Uh, if you want to follow along with my live tweets while this show is going on, if you're live in the chat, just follow the hashtag MM for Mad Mike. Rocket, Rocket. Also joining us from Johnstown, PA, about two hours out there somewhere, is Bobby F. J. Town. Hi, everyone. I'm just testing my new boots. <laughs> <laughs> awesome awesome and also with us he's uh in uh mysterious mystery uh parts unknown he is uh some call him jim but tonight we're calling him the wrestle genius at wrestle genius on the twitters how you doing sir who what <laughs> sir, I, I. <laughs> sir you were supposed to do the like melissa santos was the Santos? I don't know. I, I'm, I'm still catching up on my Lucha Underground. I still have research for that interview. In they two call him Jim. <laughs> Jim. You got the point. The following podcast is Look all adorable. <laughs> Awesome. Well, this is your Wrestling Mayhem show. Uh, like I said, we talk some professional wrestling, typically of the WWE nature, but whatever else comes our way. Uh, but uh, it's not just this. We have so many shows at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can also find links to subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, Spreaker, Daily Motion, all over the place. Look for some Wrestling Mayhem Show action. Yes, count those up, Mike. Uh, and uh, please also support the show. Lots of links over there for, uh, we'll, we'll mention the t-shirts and, and everything else uh but especially our patreon supporters get to those in a moment t-shirts t -shirt. bobby's got one he's rocking it right uh, now oh yeah oh yeah and yeah, of course your photos this weekend senior photos right mayhem no, senior, this weekend. mayhem school photos are coming soon uh yes. i think it's gonna is something we're gonna work on uh Donna, hey Donna's picture kind of looks like she's kind of got that like movement thing going on i don't know anyways kind of laser background the laser background, the full, can I, can I? full on eighties, nine early nineties laser background. Yep. There you go. There you go. We should just do senior pictures where it's just like, but it's like on the edge of a wrestling ring, right? <laughs> by a, by a brook. I, we were having a conversation about we need better <laughs> pictures of us wearing our own merchandise to to help sell the shirts, like like you know us being you know us you know average Joe wrestling fans, uh, uh, just kind of attempting to look sexy or or something. Uh, Risen oh, I in a sword, prom, sword. Photo, prom yeah. photo post. There you go. There you go, Mike. <laughs> Sork, some of us don't have to attempt to look sexy. Well, all there right? you go. There you go. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> you can <laughs> drop us a line, 412-206-WMS0, <laughs> or you can drop an email Good to... Good Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. We got a lot of fan mail tonight. Thank you guys for stepping up. We got a question I'm sure that will destroy the length of this podcast uh, in the oh second God. half. And uh, people contributing to their conversations are big topics of the week. And like I said, I already mentioned the Patreon, uh, but uh, big ups to our Patreon supporters. Uh, you can join us at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. It's linked over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can support the show. If you're unable to buy a shirt, you want to directly contribute, you will get something. If you do a dollar per episode, you will get something. One could be the Wrestling Mayhem Show Gold, where we do some very stuff, uh, special thought experiments. 
sometimes special interviews, sometimes some comedy. Uh, you know, really kind of you get a, get a uh, look into our brains when we're not talking about professional wrestling or the other things we do in Sorgatron Media because we talk about, about everything. Uh, but anyways... Uh, this week, of course, thanks to our Patreon supporters, uh, Antonio Garza, TheWrestlingRevolution.com. Please check out that site. Some great news, some DVD reviews, indie wrestling reviews, all kinds of fun stuff. And, of course, the other guy, he happens to do uh, Virtual Potholes, uh, White.net.com. It's out there somewhere. I can't remember last time he was on. You know, he got a new one. Uh, but his name for tonight is Bo Diggity. Woo! So thank you very much, long, long time supporters of the show, and you can too. Please review. Please, if you haven't had a chance, get on the iTunes. You don't know how much it means to help get the word out on this show. And I've run into some people. Uh, and thank you, everybody that, that that's said great things about the show to me this week. Uh, I know I ran into a, I ran into a fan at Raw, guys. <laughs> Oh. You, you can uh, check out that story sure, on. Did you let? Did you let him chop you? I didn't let him chop me. It was. A, I think. <laughs> I think if I let him chop me, would have gone thrown out. So we're in the position that we were in uh, down there on the floor. So, uh, but anyways. Uh, so thank you very much for for uh, saying hi. Let us know you enjoy the show. You don't know how much that means. And like I said, we had a conversation about that on the LB and the Sorg Power, Morning Afternoon Power Hour that you can find at SorgatronMedia.com. So let's get into the show. Uh, first up, let's talk about ladies. I'm glad that we got no Ooh, ladies, ladies whatsoever to represent this week as we talk about the divas. Thank you very much. We'll do our best. <laughs> uh, but of course, Did last... I get the wig again? Did you get the wig? Do you have it handy? Maybe. <laughs> okay, okay. If you can't, okay. It's, 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 it's all right. Just, just. But of course, okay. we had the uh, an uprising of NXT last night. We had uh, Becky Lynch, Charlotte, and of course, Sasha Banks. All stepping up. It looks like we're. It feels like we're turning into like we're going to have a three on three on three Survivor Series match of some sort at Battleground. I don't know if they've announced anything just yet, but uh, uh, this actually was germinating a little bit from uh, uh, Mark Madden. I, I got a text from from Dutter that said, "Hey, Mark Madden saying we should watch Raw. Uh, that it's a step in the right direction." And now Mark Madden strangely was just hanging outside the main gate at console energy center Saturday night after the WWE Mick live show always does. I've never, have you witnessed this before? Uh, he, he, he just is always there. I've never witnessed it, but I've heard things. I mean, I mean, I've, 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 I've done some work with Mark Madden and, and, and he's a cool guy, but it's just like, it's just surreal to just like walk on. But Mark Madden is just freaking hanging there. You know, <laughs> this is Pittsburgh, P P Pittsburgh. You will randomly run into Virgil and Mark Madden. That's how it hangs around here, okay? Mm -hmm. um, but anyways, so based on that, I was like, okay, I want to pay some extra attention to Raw. And and, and that's what we got. We got a good introduction um, um, from that. We have an email, actually, uh, from... Wait, wait, wait. I got it noted here somewhere. I lost my notes. My notes just went weird. Uh, but we do have an email here. Uh, Garza? No. Ciro, mm -hmm. yeah, got Garza yeah. Uh, emailed in. And part of that is uh, talking about the Divas. So I wanted to touch on that before we get deep into the conversation. He says it's been a while since his email, but this time he does have something he wants to mention. Let's start off with the good stuff. That triple threat match was amazing. Kind of backwards booking, having seen it ha have to go against the Tire Hero, but still great. John was uh, also great on commentary during the whole thing. Now, the big part of his email I want to get to. Now, not everything was good. So he does not have a positive side on this. Uh, mm -hmm. Leave it to WWE to fuck up the debut of the NXT girls. Uh, fucking Stephanie McMahon, man, McMahon, man. Uh, she had no business being there. Not only has she got, been gone for weeks, and she just came back with, uh, uh, came back to belittle the champ and try to steal the spotlight. Why can't we just have Paige just introduce them as her last resort or something? No. Fucking Stephanie McMahon needs to give us her hypocrite give divas a chance bs there was no reason why stephanie would be a babyface and support page it just felt like a hogan-esque maneuvering to be the one in the babyface slot for this uh thing that she knows will go down as a big moment in history also sasha joining tamina and naomi makes no sense whatsoever like at all terrible execution of what could have been an awesome moment i disagree I see his point, though. Yeah, yeah, I see his point. It was um, it was weird that it was like we had this giant mashup of here's all the divas that are important. Sorry, Natalia. Um, so I, I don't know. It, it, what what are you? I, I thought it was a great moment to introduce them to Raw, even though we have seen them on other matches. Are, are, have they been? Has Charlotte and Sasha we been saw, on Raw? We saw Charlotte. 
We saw Charlotte, Charlotte. on Raw once, and she lost really quickly to Natty. Okay, okay. So they had a weird little test there, but this is like the real debut of her. And we ended with the the three of them on top. And I, I don't know what you do from here, but my 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 stipulation I, I mentioned on the Raw wrap up last night: we need to have two significant divas matches every Raw in three hours. There's no reason we can't have that. Well, I mean, I'd be okay with one for right now. Right. 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 Um, right. Yeah, I, I, I'd be okay with one for right now, but um, there, we need like the match that Alicia Fox and Paige had a few weeks ago mm-hmm. was really, really good, and that's something that they can take a cue from. Like, but if you have, if you're really bringing up Charlotte, Becky. And Sasha, I personally don't think that they're all coming up full time. Okay. I personally don't think that. I think they were brought in to kind of show the Bellas that all of these women are nipping at their heels. Right. Like, I I think we might keep maybe Charlotte and Becky and Sasha stays down at NXT while she's still champion. But who knows? She could Kevin Owens this, this thing. That's what I feel like. I think I think all of them are. They're going to do a crossover thing uh, uh, while we go here because we do have Sasha and Charlotte this week on NXT, for instance. Um, so in the meantime, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, Mr. Genius. Uh, what what do you, what do you think of this whole situation? I think that that's probably true in terms of, of, of part timing. I think that they'll probably come up and wrestle a little bit on Raw, see how things go. If the, you know if the crowd is into it, if the you know, the ratings are sufficient to what they consider to be your success. And at that point, decide whether they're going to stay up or go back down or bounce back and forth, you know, at that point. I, I, would, I, I think Mike is right, though. I think you'll probably see two of those girls come up and the other hang around NXT more, you know, primarily, let's say. Mm-hmm. And, and another thing that um, Garza was talking about that, just because their debut may not have been the best, their debut was just to get them exposure. I mean, who knows? At Battleground, if there is a three-on-three-on-three, on three on three, Sasha Banks could very easily just turn on Naomi and Tamina. Very, very easily. <laughs> like, it's, it's not to say that what they debuted as last night on Raw is what they're going to be forever. Because, I mean, what they could have done was have um, Charlotte and Sasha come out and bring out Summer Rae and be the BFFs against Team Bella. I mean, that's one way they could have gone with it. Right, right, exactly. Um, I don't know, what do you think, Bobby? I love Becky Lynch, and I I was surprised she was one of the ones they they brought up. I thought for sure it was just going to be Sasha and Charlotte going again, and with Paige going against the Bellas. Um, I, I'm intrigued by how this is, is all breaking down and stuff. So it's going to be great, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, Garza, I, I do see his point about Stephanie, though, warning in on it, kind of. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I do, too. It was a little weird because yeah. mm-hmm. she was, la- at last, we thought, teaming with the Bellas, right? Yeah. And, and granted, there's been no contact. Well, still, and then again, she fired Bree. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, it was around this time last year that Stephanie fought the Bellas. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's and right. Stephanie always gets in digs at Brie Bella for Ted mm-hmm. being on the shelf. So, I mean, but I think Stephanie was also kind of a stand-in for Triple H. Right, right. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. I mean, Even though he was backstage. Triple H, Triple H's baby is NXT. That, that is what he, I think, considers to be his legacy at this point. That is the big hit that is completely 100% attributed to him. So anytime anything big NXT happens, if he's not in the ring, Standing around, Stephanie is going to be whether we like it or not. That's the way. It's right, going to be. right. That's their initiative. Uh, did you guys happen to see the raw fallout of that with Stephanie talking to them backstage? Yes, <laughs> yes. Oh, it was so. If you guys haven't seen, it, I believe it's on our Facebook page. Mm-hmm. Uh, go, go to Wrestling Man Show on Facebook. It's a video of Steph talking to them after the debut. Charlotte's crying. Sasha's tearing up. Becky's tearing up. It's it's. Rick Flair is crying in the background somewhere too. Rick Flair is Rick Flair has not stopped crying since he left TNS, and that's tears of joy. <laughs> yes, yes. 
Yeah, so there's actually, there, it looks like there's some more. You guys are still posting Diva stuff on there. Um, so there's their, their demo. In, uh, it, and also, like a Diva's thing, uh, uh, finishing in a, a multiple submission moves. And mm -hmm. I think that's what's important. And, and it's, 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 I think it's significant because, and this is the big test for me. And this is the big question I have is this, now that we have these three talents that have been tearing it apart in NXT, what happens? Do we see if these guys fail, not fail, but don't live up to the hype on WWE Raw, there is something wrong with WWE Raw. Okay? Mm -hmm. Like, how has Paige not had as great a match as since she's come up? And, 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 and I've, had, I've floated the theory before. I think when you get to that point, these girls are doing, and guys too, are, are doing all of these extra things, the total divas, the, the media, the, the, tra the different kind of traveling maybe they're doing with NXT. And I think that somehow affects what they do in the ring. That's my theory. That, oh, That's my pure, pure theory uh, based on what we've seen come up before. So let's see what happens here. I'm sorry, Bobby. I'm hoping Emma gets a second shot out of this. True, true. Uh, I hope they bring her up as the, uh, like I said last night, dead behind the eyes, Emma. Uh, <laughs> and and um, it's because her and Paige had some classic matches in NXT, you know? I mean, mm -hmm. she's one of the ones that, that they thought was going to be something, and then she basically came up and was a prop for Santino. Isn't it so nice now that they have a second chance farm system with that, though? Mm -hmm. I mean, look, I mean, Sin Cara or whoever might mm -hmm. be Sin Cara now got to go down there, rebuild with Kalisto, who was a great talent off of the Indies. I got to witness him myself as Samurai Del, Del Sol. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, it, 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 you know, now Lucha Dragons is, is a tremendous thing. And, and uh, it kind of their. Zack Ryder. Yeah, oh, Zack Ryder could, could, be could be building up. Zack Ryder is going, is, is killing it with Morgan Raleigh. Oh, uh, yeah. No. yeah. Yes. No, no. Bobby, no. you were wrong. No. You were wrong. Like, about like, okay, like I said, he is. It, it, I, I, it's, it's, the, it's the most of God. I, I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> you see what you're doing to me? You're forcing me to go on the side. Zach Ryan. Hashtag hype bros. Like, like I said, they could form a stable of Zack Ryder, Mojo Raleigh, and Dana Brooke. And it would be my nightmare. <laughs> but the it glory, would be the worst thing to happen to me since. But man, I, I don't know. know. The magic of NXT, it could become the greatest tag team ever. Yep. It could become the I, Lucha Dragons. See the, see, the thing is, I don't even think the, the hype bros is going to last that long. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to eventually turn Zack Ryder heel. Okay. And he's going to take out Mojo Rawley by smacking him in the face with. The Internet Championship. Okay, that's acceptable. I, I accept that. Say that. I mean, I don't. Bobby, Bobby. So I like the hype. Of TV. I like the hype bros. Like I like the movie Batman and Robin. <laughs> are they a good tag team? <laughs> no, no. But are they entertaining and campy? Yes. Uh, no. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. They're so awful, you can't look away. It, no. Yeah, Mojo Raleigh is essentially NXT's bat nipples. Also, another thing I said, what, what did what did we do to deserve today with Tommy and Sami Zayn going on the shelf and Mojo Raleigh coming back <laughs> within just, weeks? Well, uh, just get lucky, Bobby. To, to quote to the lucky. great philosopher Kevin Owens, uh, that's a shame. <laughs> I think, I think the next time I'm on this show, I'm going to wear a Zack Ryder shirt. I think that's that's going to be my new gimmick here. I'll wear a Zack Ryder shirt too. Zack Ryder is number one fan. That's my new gimmick. Just oh. put it down. <laughs> we'll make sure to have Chachi on the, on the show again too for that one. Wow. <laughs> wow. By the way, uh, in the running for show title is Mojo, Mojo Rally's NXT's Batman. Oh, we'll I don't want to be associated with him. <laughs> oh, man. I'll take it. I'll take it. Certainly. And then, man, can I just like put his head on the bat nipple suit? Yes, and I'll be alright. That, that's acceptable. That's acceptable. <laughs> A hype is coming. <laughs> all right. Well, anyways, no, I'm not affiliated with that. We'll see how the divas are doing. We'll see what happens here. Uh, I, I think it's really interesting. I think they, they're they're on on the verge of this could be amazing, and I really hope it does. I really hope it follows through. 
And uh, we'll see. We'll, we'll see uh, Battle Go- Battleground and Beyond. Help a SmackDown. Let's have these girls do something, right? Um, mm-hmm. Follow follow the formula of Kevin Owens to a certain point here. Uh, except I know it's kind of hard because they have so many people involved. But anyways. All right. With that, hey, let's touch base. You know, hey, we got a, a lot of pro wrestling. I experienced a lot of wrestling that I was not behind. Uh, some great stuff. We'll talk about, of course, later on Indie Mayhem Show. Absolute intense wrestling. Uh, VOW. Actually, VOW, you can get over at PittsburghWrestling.com. Uh, that show will be there available uh, very, very shortly. Hey, we got to see friends of the show. Uh, uh, Chess Flexor went through a flaming table of some sort. Uh, it was it was crazy. Uh, and, uh, friend, uh, friends of the show, them, uh, him and uh, Andrew Palace uh, went in the Tag Team Championship down there, as well as other great stuff like IWC Super Indie, uh, RWA's last show, Unleashed, which was tremendous with the Dream River just being absolutely insane and a fans bring the weapons, falls count anywhere match. Absolutely nuts. Uh, please check all that stuff out, including the upcoming Virgil and his traveling merchandise table. You can find the teaser of that over at SorgatronMedia.com and WrestlingMayhemShow.com. I am currently editing it. And let me tell you something. <laughs> Virgil. I have taken a trip to Virgil Town. I have seen things in Virgil Town. And I hope I can come back to tell the tale and give you this DVD. <laughs> is, is, it just, is, it, is it just a table and a banner with, uh, that says Superstar Ted DiBiase and Virgil? So does Virgil Town have a lot of abandoned cars? <laughs> what? Aww. Does it just look like Atlanta in The Walking Dead? <laughs> oh, you'll have to find just, out. Or is that just the new 50 Cent uh, documentary now that he's declared bankruptcy? You'll have to find it's out July 29th anyway. when it comes out. Available on digital download from PittsburghWrestling.com, IndieWrestling.us, as well as DVD <laughs> at Joe-Dombrowski.com. All right, so go check that out. Support the show. Support Indie Wrestling. That's where these guys come out that we're talking about uh, uh, these days, right? And support Virgil, right? And support mm-hmm. Virgil. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, uh, I mean, yeah, yeah. To, to, a, to a point, you know. Uh, yeah. Anyways, with that, let's talk about uh, we have a pay-per-view this weekend. And uh, those, uh, hey, let's let's do the thing. Uh, WWE Battleground, uh, kind of the newer pay-per-view. I mean, this may be the third one that they've done of these. Uh, so a uh, kind of filler, and this is kind of the road to SummerSlam. The WWE Live event here in Pittsburgh was, I didn't even realize, the Summer Sl- SummerSlam Heat Wave Tour. I guess we're getting yeah, pretty close. That's Fastlane, Sorg. That's Fastlane? The, the road to anything. Oh. It's Fastlane. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. It's the Fastlane. Hey, it's the Fastlane and good intentions. It's a- <laughs> Anyways, uh, we do have some matches lined up. I don't know. It just seems like kind of rematch city from what we've seen before. Uh, well, first rematch of all, city. probably rematch the, city, the biggest match on the card obviously has to be our truth against uh, King Barrett for a battle for the crown. Just like the good old days of Hacksaw Jim Duggan and King Haku. Mm. That was it. Is it? <laughs> I'm this sorry. This is the second time these guys have been on the pre show. That's yeah. true. That's true. I, you know, I, I weep. Free show city. I yeah. weep for Wade Barrett. I, I, I just can, can can our truth wrestle in the elephant costume? What from Swerved? Did you? Oh see yes, I did. That was amazing. It, he needs to, that. That needs to be our truth gimmick. <laughs> it's, it's just I, el- I would one hundred percent support that. Elephant our truth. He's still rapping, right? And then Paige yeah. just randomly attacks, tackles him as he's coming down the ramp. Uh, and he just bounds, rolls down because he can't get up because of that stupid suit. Um, but Archer has been like the most ent- entertaining in, in a yeah. while. I've loved his promos, especially his pop up promos at, uh, on SmackDown. Uh, great stuff. Uh, uh, he's, I, I like Our Truth more when he forgets he has to wrestle. That's true, too. That, yeah. that, that was fun, too. I mean, they've just been having fun with him. He's a great distraction I, on the card. I just feel bad for Wade Barrett. A little bit, yeah. It's almost bigger. like winning, winning King of the Ring was a curse. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, not maybe, maybe, he'll, maybe he'll lose it, and you know, you know, not as big a curse as uh, Sheamus with his Money in the Bank briefcase uh, taking on Randy Orton, and uh, that will be our nap time probably from the pay per view. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 individually, I like the guys, but just um, I when when they pop up on Raw, I get sleepy, and I don't mm. know what it is. I don't want to hate either guy, but I'm just done with them. I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, the, the the newness of Seamus' uh, fun, funky haircut has worn off on me. That's because they didn't do anything with it. No, he's just he's just like, asshole Seamus. Like, it almost seems like he just had that for Ninja Turtles and just decided to keep it when he returned to the ring. I don't know. I don't know about that. 
I thought I was inspired by Immortals, to be honest. But he's, oh. he's still. Oh, good. Oh, God, fine. You're fine. He, he, still, he still comes out and yells, dude. I'm like, <laughs> fella. fella. That'd be like me going somewhere and just going, man! <laughs> it makes no sense. So he should at least join Team Bella. Then it'd be Bella and Fella. I like that mm. a little bit. I actually kind of like that a little bit. A yeah, little it's, bit. it's not bad. I mean, it's got a ring to it's it. It's something because honestly, I don't know why him and Randy Orton are feuding. No, no, neither do they. I do not know why, and no one on commentary for the past month has explained it to me. Nope. Absolutely not. All right, this one's got a little more behind it. We got Kevin Owens and Cena. The title's up for for grabs. I tiny I'm, bit more behind it, Sork. You need a bit more behind it. Tiny bit. What? Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited like, again. A little bit. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. It's it's. Uh, I don't know how they're gonna book this. Because at this point, Kevin Owens almost doesn't need the title. No, certainly not. No. Well, but that's all they know to do is throw a strap on somebody at this point, right? Um, I think we're going to have something weird happen here, and I'm kind of hoping it ends up a four-way with Rusev and uh, Cesaro at SummerSlam. I could see that happen. Yeah. Um, I could see it being a three-way because Dolph Ziggler will be back from his yeah. fractured larynx by, like, mid-August. Okay. It took, it took uh, uh, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat how many months to recover from this? <laughs> but, but that was with a ring bell, Bobby. That was with a ring oh, okay. bell. Not different. a crutch. Not a crutch. That was a lot different. All right. How about uh, Seth Rollins, Brock Lesnar? That's going to be good. Uh, no? Seth is winning somehow. You think so? Yeah, Absolutely. Think so too. Either I that, or I can see a DQ. Okay. I think we're, I think we're finally going to see Heyman turn. No. Oh, no. I don't think so. I think no. so. No. No, because Bobby, uh, the the only way I the only reason I say no to Heyman turning, you really want Brock cutting a promo by himself? No, you're Nobody not going to have that. this. You, you don't. You don't. Do you don't. This? Need... Think about this. Think about this. <laughs> think about this. The, the the worst thing that can happen to Brock Lesnar is opening his mouth, right? The worst thing for money, the worst thing for anything is letting him open his mouth. There's no I, I don't think he needs anybody to speak for him anymore, though. Yes, he does. I think he just needs yes, to kick does. ass. No. I think he just needs to kick ass. You know, if he's, no, but if, if they put the strap back on him, he's going to have to be involved in promos because that's just mm-hmm. that's just how they program their TV show. Yeah, you know, He's got to spend 15 minutes in the ring standing around every Monday night, essentially. Right. So there's no way they're going to let him pop. He needs a mouthpiece. And plus, Paul has already turned on Brock before. They're not going to do that old chestnut again. No. 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 And, I can see maybe a shield reformation. And you don't, kind. That's, that's kind of what I'm going for, too. You know, we talk about Dean being kind of non existent this week. You know, uh, Seth's at the end of his rope and doesn't have anybody behind the authority behind him. So, and, and, and people have kind of messed with the idea of maybe maybe something happens with Seth. He drops the belt and feuds with Triple H for SummerSlam. Has been an idea floated around. Um, I think mostly fan. I don't think there's any basis well, on that at all. But then if you have that, then you get Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns, which we all want to see. Right, guys? Uh, which I, th- oh, I think they okay try. I honestly, hey, I, I honestly I, think I've they been try. I've told I wanted to see that. I've been told a few times I wanted to see you. Okay. <laughs> you want what we give you. You'll like it. You I can, it, like it. I can see I'd it. rather see Brock Lesnar win and then take on Cesaro for SummerSlam. You're right. I know I, that's I'd not really a big see, money yeah. that's not a big money match, mm-hmm. but that's a big money match. But at what what point is like Brock Lesnar against anybody a money match? You know? I, uh, Kofi Kingston. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Send him, I, I, send him to Japan. Let him wrestle. <laughs> there so you go. I mean, that was a money match, it. though, because it was just him being there. But you know, it brought people. I, I think that sold tickets because he was so big with the IWGP but, uh, championship. Sorg, there, you noticed they never said who he was wrestling. No, they did. They just no, said it he was going to be there. Right, right, and that was the money. Because even people that don't speak English, if they had known he was wrestling Kofi Kingston, they would have stayed home. Right? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Brock's coming back. You'd have been like, oh, Brock's coming back. Always oh, fighting. Thanks for no thanks. I'll, I'll, yeah. 
Pass. All right. Uh, look at back at the card. We got the three-way finally that we've been building for two months. Uh, Ryback versus Big Show versus Miz for the Intercontinental title. Yay. I want Miz to win this match so bad. Kinda, just so right? Ryback goes away. Aw. Ryback's Brooke, great. Ryback, Mojo Rawley, <laughs> and Zack Ryder. Oh, it's, it's Bobby's faction from hell. Yep. Wow. The Survivor Series team that I don't want to survive. <laughs> It's that it's that job team that that goes down to uh, uh, like the, whatever team the Warlord's on, right? Um, anyways, <laughs> tag team titles on the line. Uh, of course, uh, somebody from the New Day will take on the primetime players. Uh, hey, they've been entertaining, and everybody's behind them. The crowd was really behind both teams, to be honest, at the live show. Mm-hmm. Here in Pittsburgh. I think New Day's taking it back. You think so? I, I think I, I, I think I, so. I think Titus had it. For the Father's Day bump because he won Father of the Year mm-hmm. or whatever that contest thing was. You know what and I hate? New Day's going to get it back because they don't have to worry about Brock destroying the tag team champions anymore. Now, I know I know this is one of those things where if you're just watching Raw, you don't see, you know, there is stuff happening on other shows. But when you're watching Raw and there's, again, we have this all this time, just like the Divas. There needs to be two Divas matches, right? There needs to be more than just... just cause if you're not paying attention, it feels like these are the only two tag teams in WWE if you just watch Raw. And I think that's a problem if that's your flagship show, right? Uh, you need something. I mean, even mixing it up, you just had combinations of these guys for the last month to build to this. And I think that's well, another thing that's really kind of tired what we've been doing on these and, and seeing this show from week to week. What's mixing it up? Well, you have to remember they did lose two tag teams kind of really quickly because the Usos are still out. And they don't still have Ascension, Lucha Dragons, the Matadors. I mean, didn't we just have a giant elimination chamber with a bunch of... uh, And we lost two Mm -hmm. of the six? We got to still be able to do something out there. Yeah, but does anyone really want to see the Ascension? I do. Do something to make us want to see them. That's the problem. That's the job of a writer is to make us want to see these people. But, but it's the job of the wrestler too. Don't get me wrong. But they gotta but be. The New Day is the only heel tag team we have. Ascension. Ascension. Uh, I uh, guess. But uh, what uh, the the Luchadors? Not Luchadors. Um, the Matadors yeah. kind of are. Los Matadors. Right. Right. Well, I think they're by necessity. Kind of kinda heels. Right. Kinda. Sorta. Of. Sorta. Of. <laughs> So, uh, and other than that, we also have, I don't know, I lost my thing. Son of a... <laughs> uh, Roman Reigns, Bray Wyatt, eh, whatever. I, was, I, gee, I wonder who's going to win that. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of whatever on this on this show, isn't there? It's a good thing we're just yeah. paying nine ninety nine dollars uh, at this point. So. I'm getting it for free, Sorg. I'm paying pay, $2.50 per NXT episode. I pay nine ninety nine for Swerved every month. I don't know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, I'll give you that. Uh, so let us know your thoughts. We'll be tweeting there on Sunday night. Uh, let us know at Mayhem Show on the Twitters. Uh, guys, pizza. We all love pizza. It goes hand-in-hand hand with professional wrestling, especially if you're doing a pay-per-view party or a WWE Network party, whatever you want to call it this weekend. Um, if you're in the Pittsburgh area, go get your pizza Sunday night from Slice on Broadway here in Beachview in the South Hills of Pittsburgh or over in Carnegie, PA, down on the Main Street. There's Rico on the front cover there of that website. Uh, check him out. they got some great videos. You can check out what they're doing down there at Slice on Broadway. Uh, SliceOnBroadway.com, PGH underscore Slice on the Twitter, Slice on Broadway, on the Instagram, and the Facebook, uh, supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting, perfectly pepperoni pizza. I forgot a word in there, but I got the important ones. Get hungry, Slice on Broadway. We'll be right back after this look of this past week in Sorgatron Media. Yeah. It was up on Crossy Road. I don't care anymore. Oh, oh, that's sad and disheartening. But you can, I mean, you can only cross so many roads, Bobby. It, it, it's retrofitted with giant paint paintball guns, like Gatling paintball guns, and uh, and it looks freaking serious. It actually takes two people to auto- operate. There's actually an operator and a gunner in this thing. It's ridiculous. So, and there's some shots there of it just destroying cars with paintballs. Wow. Amazing. He gave me one of the most memorable moments I'll ever have in my entire career. No matter what I've done before or what I will do. Uh, that night, Chuck handed me the IWC title, the old title, the custom-made International Wrestling Cartel heavyweight title. And I'm, and as I'm talking to you right now, I'm looking at it. I have it in a glass case. 
on my wall. It's not a lot of times in independent wrestling that you get to keep something that you worked very hard for. Okay. Like can't snarky. say don't be don't be it. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't be a snarky. Yeah. Don't be a no smart ass. Comments. Don't be like, a don't be a smart ass. Don't be yeah, that's smart it. ass sword. Did you just come up with that? Yeah, I don't think I've heard of it before. Mother awesome. Chachi Plays for Kids is coming back again. The 24-hour Gameathon for Youth Arts Programs in Pittsburgh. August 7th and 8th at the Tunesium or join us live. ChachiPlays.com. Find out how you can make a difference too and donate today. ChachiPlays.com. Up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, BA, start! And please check out that, all these shows, uh, Awesome Cast, Boss Battle, so much more at SorgatronMedia.com and their respective sites. So let's get into the biggest of big questions. DJ Lunchbox. Lunchbox. You know here. Lunchbox. Um, uh, oh, actually, Sorg. Yes, yeah. Sorg. I, I, know where, I know where LB is. Okay. Um, in his hosting duties in Panel Riot, okay. he wanted to preview the movie Ant-Man and decided that the only way he could do that is by using pin particles on himself, and now intern Stan is looking for him in the lawn of Pittsburgh. Oh, honey, I shrunk the puppet lunch box. Like, like Rick Moranis in Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Oh. He's on a model train fighting somebody. Mm. Mm. Fighting Sawtooth Willie. Well, anyways, it looks like there's an email somebody put in the notes with tiny, tiny fingers. Uh, and it says, howdy gang, I apologize for not being able to attend tonight's proceedings, but Papa Lunchbox got shit to do. That's one way to put See, it. I told you, he was he was researching Ant-Man. One of those things is a big question. Have what? you readied your shining minds and tiny hairless bodies? Uh, because here we go. I have been thinking of names. Over the years, we have known wrestlers under so many names and very few of them their own. I remember a time when I found out Shawn Michaels was really named uh, Michael Shawn Hickenbottom, and I thought, yes, that makes sense. I would want to change that name, too. <laughs> that being said, my thought, uh, my thought feet led me down the brain path to this simple and elegant question. Which wrestler, throughout time, has had the best ring name? For my money, Gorilla Monsoon had the finest ring name of all all time no one else even comes close it perfectly encapsulates the man's brutality and power and unpredictability it is straight up spot on i will go the same era i am a big fan of the junkyard dog yeah it's good like i like it's it's very visual it was very cartoonish a little bit in that time and before it became a cartoon in the 90s and they had a cartoon in the 80s you know it was just I don't know. I think it, that resonates with me for some reason. JYD. What, you got one, Bobby? I got one. Uh, I'm going to go with the obvious, Randy Savage. Because the Macho oh, Man so Randy great. Savage. Because so he's both a savage and quite Randy. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> I mean, I mean, he's, he's the best. What are you, you going to you know? He, he's, he's, he's one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. What about you, Mr. Genius? Honestly, he's a crackpot, insane idiot to this day. Of course, Jesse the Body Van Cora. He's insane. Fucking insane. He's also he's also in Predator though, so you can't you can't be all bad, right? Yeah. The government has built. Yeah, Running Man as well. Now that I think about it, but uh, I mean, just a you know. Perfect, like seventy-ish, eighty-ish, you know, era type of thing where it just, you know, it's his. It's, is that his real name? It is his real name. I think it is. Yeah, I think so, yeah. But like, he just, it was just the perfect little addition to his name, and it just, it couldn't have fit more perfectly. Mm -hmm. But man, did I tell you about the? I can't do. <laughs> did I tell you about the weather machine the government's building, McMahon? <laughs> Oh, geez. Wait, does Jesse Ventura know Cobra Commander? <laughs> is that what's going on? Yes, he does! <laughs> chemtrails. Yes, chemtrails. Chemtrails. I'll tell you about chemtrails. I hate he-man! What? 
We're jumping. We're jumping. We're jumping. Mad Mike, what do you? What? What? What's your favorite name? Um, gentlemen, while I respect your dis- your your choices, you're all wrong. There's only one man who has, shall we say, the perfect wrestling moniker. Fandango. <laughs> you mean Marty Jannetty? <laughs> I mean Kurt Henning, also known as Mister. Perfect. Yeah. Yes. Because yes. those promos, when he, when I was a kid and I saw him throw a pass all the way downfield, mm-hmm. shoot the basketballs, hit the hit the hit every pool shot that he had, everything he did was perfect. He never ever missed hitting that gum with his hand when he spat it out, mm-hmm. and doing the towel flip mm-hmm. every single time. Mm-hmm. I have a towel when I go to the gym and I try to do that shit. Never works. I'm sure a lot of people do. <laughs> Whenever I chew gum, I try to spit it out and hit my hand. I just look like I'm swatting at a gnat. He is a Mr. Perfect for a goddamn reason. Oof. Oof. Sammy never won the world championship. Yes. <laughs> well, yeah, he's one of the ones. He's made WA champ, and uh, I believe. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, like WWE. Oh, WWE. But he, he never had a major promotion. Yeah. You're right. All right. Uh, how about uh, uh, from the chat room? Of course, Big John Stud from uh, yeah, Hot Wheels. That's a good one. Big John Stud. He was a big guy. He was a big guy. Uh, I don't know if he was necessarily a stud, though. I mean, I guess it depends on what you're into. Yeah, Alex Cars. Uh, George, I, but I think in the '80s, like you, that was like he's a stud. You know, like like, like that's something oh, they, okay, like Vince okay. McMahon would yell. You know, look look at this guy. He's a stud. Um, <laughs> Gorgeous George from Alex Cars. He was gorgeous, oh, yeah. and he was George. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, that's good. He was, he was a pretty man. He was a pretty um, man. All right, since we all went kind of 80s, yeah. yeah. what would you guys say is the best modern one? Oh, come on, guys. Mojo Rawley. <laughs> <laughs> okay, case in point. Okay. <laughs> move on. I think, I, I guess a, uh, out of most recent, uh, Roman Reigns is probably a good one. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good name. Yeah, that's a good name. That's a good name for this era. Um, I'm gonna uh, go Mil Muertes. Yeah. Okay. I'm partial. Yeah. The man of a thousand deaths. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't know. A, a, a genius. You got one. You know, not really. I think they all suck. Yeah. Uh, it was good, John Cena. I I agree. I think Roman Reigns is. A I'm sure that when they were bouncing this soft <laughs> each other in a writing room, somebody said, like, "What's with this show?" I'm so I'm so <laughs> sorry. I last one the T-shirt. You know, it yeah. probably comes up all the time. What's going to look great on a T-shirt? Roman Roman Reigns. Even though they just put RR on his T-shirts. <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, you know. You know. Um, you know what's not a good name? Michael McGillicuddy. That was an A. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Mojo Raleigh <laughs> CM Punk. Oh come on! I don't think it's yeah, a good name. Yeah, I you know come I'm kind of with you on that, Sork. Mm-hmm. I mean, he he has encapsulated that and owned it and everything, but on, by itself, not a good name. And it's Chicago However, made. Or, yeah, if if it was Chicago made, like if that was officially what it's for, that mm-hmm. makes it better. That's true. So There's no story. There's just like it, CM well, Punk. It's just what we call him. You know, yeah. so now well, it's I'm just for much litmus test. I got a real litmus test for this stuff. I got a can you chant it? Oh, that's a good one. I got an underrated one. Can you chant it? You know what I mean? I got an underrated one. Okay. Uh, Finn Balor combining yeah. Finn McCool and Balor the Demon. I, I think that's kind of a cool twist on things. He's a little bit of both. You know, I, really, I, I, th- I think that's a really good name. You know what was a good one? Mordecai. <laughs> I'm not say I thought Funaki was great too. Yeah. You know what was great? Jimmy <laughs> Wang. Funaki. You know what was great? Jimmy Wang Yang. Uh anyways. <laughs> you know what was great? Jamie Noble boy. Uh, yeah, Noble also woman. uh Missy Media. Wife of the show, Missy, also says uh, uh, she's texting me. She's doing the show notes right now and tweets. Thank you very much. Uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper. That's a good yeah. one. 
that yeah, was that a was good the other one. one I was gonna say from the past. That was a really good one. And also, she's asking, is, is Triple H still considered this era? Era? And you gotta think that's <laughs> one that evolved over time because he was Hunter Hearst Helms- Helmsley, and eventually the Triple H moniker was was developed. And, and, oh, and that's another one you look back, and I think if you're like, why do they call him Triple H? You know, I, I like, and there's history to that. Um, yeah. I go back to, uh, and she's seconding the Finn Balor as well. Uh, I go back to that video that was done about uh, what was it called the, when the guy like retold the entirety of Triple H's career with women playing the parts. Oh, uh, wrestling isn't real. Wrestling yeah. isn't real. Yeah, and, like if you have a, like twenty five minutes, find that, go look that up on YouTube. Uh, great explanation of like Triple H as the best character in wrestling. Really good stuff. Okay, at that point, uh, I, 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 so this week uh, let's do uh, best of. IWC 2013, uh, some good stuff over there um, at IWCWrestling.com, and uh, and then I'll have exactly who was on that DVD for a while. But you need to, uh, of course, tweet us your uh, uh, answers to this. Who who is the best name throughout time? Yeah, best ring name in professional wrestling, and you'll have a chance to win. Like I said, IWC Wrestling's best of 2013, including big names like Ring of Honor's Michael Elgin, Don Castle, that's ripping it up right now, Paul London, another guy. That's a good name, and I think it's his real name too. Uh, Anthony Nice was a part of uh, uh, the company at that time. Really good wrestler. I, I, he's doing some stuff, I think, in the Northeast. Uh, he was in TNA for for a minute. Logan Shulo, who I think you're going to see pop up very very soon. Bobby mm-hmm. Fish, Facade. So much more. So go check all of that out. Uh, and that's the courtesy of PittsburghWrestling.com and the International Wrestling Cartel at IWCWrestling.com. And uh, from there, please check out, uh, if you want to support the show, check out ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS. We have uh, uh, a fine, fine selection of t-shirts. Bobby F. J-Town uh, is wearing the cotton, cotton poly blend. I actually have no idea what the t-shirts are made of other than cloth. Uh, but <laughs> go check. What? 100% cloth. Heavyweight cotton tea, sir. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Check it out. It's fine quality stuff, sir. Fine quality stuff. Um, but uh, go to ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS. You can pick up some stuff designed by the great Alex Cars. Um, I'm so sorry I called Garza Cars earlier. I'm, it's, it's everything blends Garza. together in the chat room. Uh, Carza. 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 Combine We're just going <laughs> to... That's their tag name. Mash them together. But go check out all that stuff. There's a... a like. If it, for instance, the property of mayhem that Katie's uh, uh, showing off there from I think it's from Royal Rumble uh, when I was in Pittsburgh a couple years ago actually. So please go check that out and support all the indie wrestling over there. And also we have a brand new store, uh, a redesigned store, a spread shirt. Uh, you can find the link, the, the Mayhem Club uh, link over there on WrestlingMayhemShow.com, including Don't Be a Smart Ass is now up on the store, <laughs> if you want to check that out. Actually, let me pull it up for you guys on video. Uh, so uh, you guys liked it when we, we dropped that in the middle of the show, so uh, why not? Let's do a... Uh, uh, and if there's anything we say on the show you want on a t-shirt, if you're going to buy that thing, please check that out. And we're also um, tweeting every once in a while. They're, they do have sales going on in that store, independent of everywhere else. Uh, recently, and I think it's still going on. I think today was the last day that you could buy uh, uh, thirty dollars worth of stuff for free shipping, for instance. Uh, so, uh, and we have all kinds of other stuff. Like I said, the Mayhem Club. I know uh, Mac Harms has been sporting that lately. And, and uh, Sorg, yes. Sorg, um, we also have a midweek war T-shirt coming out soon. What? I've seen the design. Uh, Garza, Garza did it. Mm-hmm. It's really great. Oh, nice! It's really, really great. <laughs> Well, Mojo Raleigh is my homeboy. So go check that. You can pick up that shirt right now. The Don't be a smart ass on our spreadsheet shop. shop uh, Eighteen dollars and link that again at wrestlingmayhemshow.com under the Bull Club. Uh, I need to put a new button up there, of course, uh, so it, so it kind of shows it off a little bit more. But go get some mayhem wear, guys, and support the show. All right, let's get into. We have uh, actually uh, some more fan mail. First of all, first of all, Mr. Garza had more email, I believe, or was that the most of it? Oh, also. He, he had some, uh, in addition to talking about the Divas stuff earlier, uh, in a, anyone else feel that Cody should have come back as Cody, a super baby face trying to make his dad proud and not as a heel that we all feel yeah. awkward for booing? And uh, those comic book drawings, I'm just going to assume that since we all made fun of the TNA ones back in April, that we'll make fun of these too. I gotta say, I didn't see the ones in April at TNA, mm-hmm. and I love these ones. So, mm-hmm. um, Mike? I, I, I will say that I did see the ones in TNA, and 
they were horrible. They were awful drawings, and this time on Raw, it actually makes sense because Neville has a comic book coming out, and Stardust is feuding with a comic book actor. So that actually makes sense, as opposed to one random day where Dixie gave her nephew a crayon and said, here, draw our wrestlers without knowing what they look like. I'm, I'm trying to find samples to see what how this turned out. Um, but oh, I'll see if I can find them. While please, please send that over. Uh, drop it in the doc next to this email if you can, uh, so I can bring it up. Uh, so... Uh, so there's that. I like them. I don't know. Did anybody else have any thoughts on that? I I, I like the idea. Cool. It, it's weird being dropped in like that. And uh, but you know, along with the comic book and everything, it makes sense. And and, and even Cody's a very comic book character right now. So, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, uh, Bobby, you have anything else on that? I, I like the silver and turquoise on Cody last night. That was cool. Yeah, that was interesting. Um, but yeah, the, the drawings were really, really really neat, and it gave it like that big fight feel. Okay. Thought it added to it. Yeah, it did. It did. Although I think everybody was tired after the last couple of matches. Uh, what, what about you, Jim? I don't know. <laughs> I, I thought the drawings were okay. That's all I could really tell you. you know. Okay. okay. It's, it's different. It's different. In three hours, you got to do something to mix it up, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. I would agree with that. All right. Uh, hashtag heal the Garza. Give credit where credit is due, but never compromise. Zero out. So go check. Thank, thank you to him. Thank you to him. WrestlingRevolution.com. Uh, anyways, Gabriel has emailed us. It's been a little bit. He's been, act- of course, active very much in the uh, uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group. And good to see him back on the show in email form. So I have a question for the whole Mayhem crew to answer uh, on the on the podcast. Uh, sorry if I... I mean, no, no, no. It's fine. You guys can ask questions. Uh, Dustin like kills us with three questions every week, and we, we, we love it, actually. Uh, it's, not, it's not the big question, but it's your question, which makes it big, too. So we all know Vince McMahon will either retire or die one day. Okay, starting on a low note. Wow! <laughs> he will do one or the other, <laughs> not both. Retire <laughs> or Both die. At the same time if the same he retires, <laughs> this is like. Uh, so let's say a god comes to you and says you can retire from wrestling or die. So I if you retire, retired. you live forever, but you retired from wrestling, which you loved. Uh, I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's, a, it's an interesting question. That's another big question for some other day. Uh, when that day comes, Stephanie McMahon and Paul Levesque will inherit the business. Now the question. When that day comes and Vince has no say in the day-to-day operation and Steph and Triple H fire all of the creative. I thought that that's just not even a factor. That's like, this is what's happening. Uh, who would you hire to replace the creative team? My answer is I would hire five people. Women's creative, Lillian Garcia. Hmm. I, I don't see. Okay, we'll get into that. Uh, tag team creative, mid-card singles, Edge and Christian. Uh, world title creative, uh, Edge and CM Punk. All-around creative supervisor Paul Heyman, and I hope I uh, provide a good, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, discussion topic for you guys. Rip City out. Yeah. Um, jeez, oh, could you imagine if they gave the book? Uh, hey, you don't have to imagine if they gave the book with a budget to Paul Heyman because it happened on SmackDown in the mid two thousands, mm-hmm. and Smackdown it was some kick draws butt for a while. <laughs> it, yes, very much so. Uh, it, 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 I, I gotta and I gotta say, Lillian Garcia. I, maybe he knows something I don't, but I have not seen any indication that she's a creative mind in wrestling. Has anybody seen anything else to that effect? No. I mean, not not to discount or anything. I just have no. I have no indication. There's no interviews that makes you makes me think that she's like the person to lead. She's not a wrestler for one thing, you know, and she's not some. She's somebody who's who's announced and uh, is she done much else? She 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 has a music career. She's like, fallen yeah. a couple of times. <laughs> Chachi's watching old WWE pay per views and it's like and just keeps coming back. Like I feel so sorry for Lillian Garcia. I'm like, why? What do they do now? But I don't know. I don't know. Uh, so what would you? I don't know. I, who who's got a lineup that they would they would hire for creative? Um. All right. I I got mine. Um. Lead writer Paul Heyman, mm-hmm. and then. Fill the rest out with half NXT squad, half Lucha Underground squad, and that's it. That's that's that would be the perfect wrestling show. Okay. Have have, have Lucha do the backstage pre tapes. Have the NXT take care of the in ring action. 
All right, all right. Uh, from the chat room, we have um, um, women's writer Fit Finley from uh, Eamon. I'd like yeah. that. Uh, Good idea. Women's wrestling writer doesn't have to be a woman. That's right. He just has to understand mm-hmm. wrestling and, and mm-hmm. concentrate on the ladies, right? Um, also, from before, Garza says uh, Prince Be- Devitt greater than Finn Balor. I got to go with that. Uh, I'm yeah. Not on that one. But, you know, for whatever reason. We'll see what WWE does to that name over the next couple of years, right? <clears throat> but anyways, uh, what about uh, who, who else has got one? I don't want to get in front of you guys if you're not prepared for it. <laughs> so, I okay, got one, I guess. Okay. Uh, Paul Heyman, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Chris Jericho. Mm-hmm. Uh, William Regal. Yeah, like Regal. Um. Mm-hmm. Blanket on the other ones. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, you know what? I you, let me let me pop in here for a little bit. I, I'm, I'm again going to second the Paul Heyman. He's not going to be a lead guy. You know, honestly, I think uh, Stephanie and Triple H as head head of creative is fine, right? For Bring doing back Shane McMahon. What's that? Bring back Shane McMahon. Yeah. Yes. Out of or, or bring in. Sean. Sean McMahon. Sean yes. McMahon. <laughs> Redeem yourself. I think Vince Russo is looking for a job. No, no, oh, no. He's going to be looking for a while. <laughs> okay, Dana Brooke, Mojo Rawley, Vince Russo, right back. Right. <laughs> well, you guys don't want All on a creative team of TNA. <laughs> Honestly, uh, honestly, uh, in the room, in the ring. Well, let's just put him behind the camera. Let's, let's let him write the whole show. What do you think? Let's throw Mark Madden in there. Actually, no. I actually seriously, I, I, I said this a lot. Give me Mark Madden on a, on an, on the yeah. first hour of Raw, please. Just WWE hire him, please. Um, but uh, yeah, throw him in there. I, I think for him being maybe just one of the lower creatives might be interesting because he's got a good head about wrestling. If you read his articles, um, and he was there, and he was a writer, and 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 I think. I think I think he would do all right. I don't know if he would want the job, to be honest. But yeah, uh, can somebody tweet him. Somebody tweet him. Can somebody tweet him from the Mayhem Show account? Uh, say, hey, we're talking about this on the show right now. Would you ever accept the job as commentator or writer for WWE? Please, please tweet that right now. Um, uh, you put Mark per- Madden on the last hour. Person Madden meeting. After Dark. Madden After Dark. That'd be great. It could be a show <laughs> on the network. Um, anyways, <laughs> see you at Cage Fury, Matt. Or Mark, Mark, Matt. <laughs> I turned Madden into Matt for some reason. But anyways, um, so 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 Heyman, I didn't say I probably throw that. In. You know, I wouldn't be opposed to Russo going back. Not as a head writer. I think that's a problem. Not as head writer. Um, you know, was, what's that? It was a, that was a joke. But yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, I, I love Lagana to come back. I think he's despite what you think of Impact right now. I think he's a great guy. You know, um, again, you, you just joke about uh, Lucha, but yeah, throw, throw to Joseph in there too. Might as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, Definitely. I mean, I'm just like looking at what what Lagana and DeJoseph have done since they left WWE, which then makes you think, holy crap, what did they do for WWE? Because you don't see that. Mm-hmm. You you don't see that at all. So I, I would have Matt McCarthy on my creative team too. There you go. There you go. If you're going to reach out, I mean, they had Freddie Prince Jr. on the team for a while, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so so what else? Who else is a good mind for that? You gotta, don't you feel like like Chris Hardwick would be a good creative? Uh, I think John Stewart would be better. He's oh, gonna that would be amazing. amazing. He's going to need a job. I mean, you know, I don't think Chris is cut out for us. What if, what if they no. bring in John Stewart to the to the degree that Bill Cor- Billy Corgan's doing uh, TNA? Could be. Oh, I think John Stewart is actually a fan of wrestling. I think Billy Corgan is a fan of what the money wrestling brings in. Yeah, so. yeah, he hasn't been too successful with that so far. Um, I, 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 yeah, I'm with the John Stewart thing. Uh, oh, I had somebody else in the back of my head. Ah. Uh. Also, I wouldn't be opposed to wrestlers having more say over their own characters. Mm-hmm. Right, right, and I think that's the main thing that's going to happen when those two take over. You're going to get that, and I think they mm-hmm. do already in NXT. Well, I mean, I think I think when you when you read anecdotes from people who have been on creative. WWE turns over creative Jesus all the time, I guess. I, it, it seems that not only just the wrestlers, but even the creative people themselves come through with ideas all the time, and eventually they hit a wall, whether that's it, Vince or whoever, and it completely either changes or stops or, or whatever. So if you take out that roadblock, what happens? You know, I'm sure Vince, you know, for every good idea Vince stops how many bad ones does he stop 
to, mm-hmm. you know, that, that's the other flip side to say to everything. You know, we look at Vince as this old man who's holding up the works here. How many horrible ideas have made it <laughs> all the way to him, all the way to the gorilla position? And he's like, whoa, 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 we're not doing this. <laughs> you know, um, we, we have no, I mean, being outsiders, we have no, we have no way to tell. Right. So once he's dead, well, I guess we'll know for sure. Right? <laughs> Going back to the <laughs> Not that I want you to die, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Can you take Kevin Dunn with him? Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Who wow. just left? Didn't somebody just left? Not Kevin Dunn. Somebody well, just Gerwitz. They... Brian Brian Gerwitz left and yeah. he's gonna he's working with The Rock at his company. And I think he was already working in like a consultancy position and was working on like when The Rock came back, he was working on the Rock segments. Hey, hey, Sorg, uh, those match graphics we were looking for to compare the drawings, Yeah, I just posted one in the chat room. Oh. And you tell me what you think of it because – It's not where I wired it's not, it. It's not good. Okay. We'll, we'll bring that up here for it's video in a moment good. here. Give um, a but I, I think another thing that might be beneficial is like, like we were talking about the wrestlers taking over their own gimmicks. Look at Ethan Carter. Mm-hmm. That is him. And look at his view of Rockstar Spud. That is them writing their own feud. And that has been the best thing on TNA in a good long time. Oof, those, those graphics are tough. Oh, they're, they're kind of blown up here a little bit, but still. It just looks like something that I would have gotten a $10 commission for at a Comic-Con. It looks like the really rough stuff from an old GamePro magazine. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's weird. Hosted, also hosted by JD Rocks. <laughs> yeah, and by the way, that says the final chapter. Yeah, yeah they've wrestled since then. Yeah, uh, it's all, yeah. It's also a lie. Uh, from the chat room, uh, since I pulled this up here, uh, TNA greater than WWE from Garza. <laughs> see now, see now, that's awesome. <laughs> what? Russo under the McMahon rule could work. That's what I'm saying. I think Russo under Triple H and stuff would be okay. He needs a. Re- I mean, you saw what happens without the leash. When he was at WCW. And oh, oh, I found more of these. Work. Oh, no. Uh, head writer, someone actually prominent from television that understands cohesion and logic. I'm with the, I think it was, was it Russo or Madden that, that said they need a, 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 a continuity manager, basically. I, I'm, still, I'm still with that. I've said that multiple times on the show. Heyman, Lance Storm, and Vince Russo from uh, Garza. Lita for women's and mid-card. I like that. I like all that stuff. Uh, I would even uh, I throw Trisha's hat in that as well, to be honest. Mm-hmm. So. Nobody's mentioned Jim Ross. I don't know oh, how yeah. feel about, about good old Jr. Yeah, but J- has Jr. ever had a role in creative? I know he's had a role talent. in signing people. Talent, but, yeah. He's more of a talent guy, I think. But I mean, I'm sure he understands that as well. You would think. I I don't know if you listen to his podcast. No, I hate him. It makes me hate him. Yeah, see I that. Had I don't. A conversation with somebody not that long ago. He he, and I think it was. I think it was. It may have been Matt Carlin's friend of the show. Uh, they, when you listen to Jr.'s podcast, he has such a disdain for mm-hmm. wrestling fans mm-hmm. that he really, he really, I hate to say, he looks down on them because I'm not sure that that even does it justice. But he just, he just thinks of wrestling fans as these like nuisances. Right. Despite the fact that they're they're not only right now are they putting money in his pocket with his podcast, they they're responsible for his whole career. Do you know what I mean? But he, he really looks at them as marks. And the and the unfortunate part is he's really kind of talking to those we talked about good fans and bad fans last week that led to that discussion. Um mm-hmm. I I feel like he's Bad mouthing those bad smarky fans. I got an echo somewhere, guys. I don't know which one of you guys it is. Uh, but um, but then he's playing right into it, too, and he's yeah. getting those exact same fans he's bitching about to listen to him. Absolutely right, it, right in this in the same almost in the same breath. He's 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 just slamming fans as smarks and and whatever. And you know, wrestling fans are pretty awful. Maybe not across the board, but a lot of them are, let's face it. We all know them. Mm-hmm. Some of us are them. Um, but at the same time, he turns around and says, oh, you got to support all my sponsors. And blah, blah, you know what I mean? And it's just it's, – to me, it's just really disingenuous. I don't know. I just I, – I, I've never disliked him more than after I started listening to his podcast. In mm-hmm. fact, I, I, don't, I don't listen to it at all. I was mm-hmm. drinking a peach tea the other day. 
was, <laughs> what you need, what you need I, I, to do I, I, is, is click the sponsors, keep this blog free. <laughs> I, I was having some Sonic yeah. with Okada this morning. PPR, we know. <laughs> Hey, JR, uh, we know how the internet works. Yeah, yeah. More. Uh, Eamon, Eamon is uh, putting this out there, too. He says, not to open the curtain too much, but most people in wrestling do look at them as marks. And and, and that's a, that's a thing I hate. Uh, it, that conversation happens most. JR is just more honest about it than others. And say it outright. He, he says it outright on his form. because he doesn't work for a wrestling company. Either. Exactly, exactly, exactly. But, but you know, even like... Uh, the uh, the the indie guys that are just kind of uh, uh, trash them. It's like really like the little bit you get out of this is because of these people. What are you here for? You know. Um, but anyways, but I I think one one more mind we should bring into this discussion. Mick Foley. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I got another one after. Don't I, I I think I think Mick Foley just based on reading his tweets. I think if Mick Foley was behind the scenes in WWE, which is a job I don't think he wants, but I think if he was part of the creative. This would be a much different looking company, right? A much, much different looking company. Um, you said about continuity. Mm-hmm. Uh, Matt Stryker. Yeah, I think he's a genius as far as like wrestling knowledge goes. So, yeah. Right. All right. On that note, let's take it back. Uh, I think that's all the emails that we have. If you want, you can drop us a line. Good times at wrestlingmayhemshow.com or the hotline 412-206-WMS0. And like I said, we try to get you guys in there early if you uh, match up with uh, you know some of the conversation that we're already kind of aiming for those early topics and you can be part of that conversation as well. Uh, so uh, it's time to learn. What'd you learn from wrestling this week, guys? Who's got first? Oh, sword, sword. While we all think of something, I posted a second image in the chat room. <laughs> I saw the second image. Um, I showed it shortly. Uh, I, sh- I showed it briefly, and no, yeah, this is garbage. Uh, no, I, I, I can't it, believe you would. Wow, wow. That just, that just does not look good. No, no, it doesn't. Not not. If, and that was on TV. Yeah, yeah, that was on TV. That was that was their act. That was their shown match graphics. I'm like, oh god. Like I literally <laughs> got some art at a comic con by someone who has drawn a comic of Christopher Daniels and Frankie Kazarian. That was better than that, mm-hmm. and that—that's not even a joke. Like right. I have it. Hey man, I'm, I got some good art right here. I got a headlock T-shirt from our boy Mike Kingston. I know he was rocking it at South San Diego Comic Con, so uh, that's some good stuff right there. Hey, we got—we actually got some responses. I saw it just popped up. Uh, AJ Bo Diggity uh, is uh, on the Twitters. Apparently, he has been listening to the show. He has some opinions. I will not read his opinions about Mark Madden. They are not well. Okay, I just you can, I know how he feels about Mark. You can you can imagine that's that's fine. Okay, uh, but he did have something collectively here. Um, where did he go? Where does thing go? I'm sorry, his, his tweets disappeared. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Maybe he ride back. Oh, here it is. Here it is. It, it didn't refresh apparently. Uh, you know, you know how we had that uh, fucking awesome segment of women's wrestling last night. Never happens again. <laughs> is his take on it. So, oh, there you go. That would be sad. He might be right. Oh, oh. Uh, Mike, what'd you learn from wrestling this week? Uh, I learned that even though you can have your actual boss in the ring, Sasha Banks is still the fucking boss. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's great. Bobby, what'd you learn from wrestling this week? I learned uh, if Cesaro keeps grabbing those brass rings, he's going to have enough for the bonus stage in Sonic the Hedgehog soon. Because <laughs> he has a bunch of them. Yeah. Uh, what about you, Sharman? I actually learned, mine, mine is also Cesaro related. I learned that he can suplex up to 19 WWE superstars. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I bet, I bet. If we put Cesaro in a match with the Lucha Dragons and the Matadors. He could super. He could German all four of them at once. That could be a great ongoing raw sort of gimmick here as the the, the weeks go on. Here, it's like next week he suplexes four guys at the same time, and then mm. he works his way up to like five, six, seven. It'd be amazing. This would be great. I'd be tuning in every week to watch. <laughs> Hell yeah! You, you Hell guys yeah. remember when Mark Henry used to like bend the 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 pan and everything, yeah. like a frying pan. You could just have that be the main event attraction. 
Now Cesaro will sing a, uh, swing a group of 15 wrestlers at once. While yodeling. Hosted by the Vaudevillains. Yes! Yes! <laughs> oh my god. If Cesaro was the third Vaudevillain, <laughs> and he was like the strong man that would bring out a barbell that says 400 LBs, <laughs> and he just bends it in half. That'd be amazing. Oh man. We had a lot of stuff. We're strong, man. Lunch- Cesaro. 400 lunchboxes. <laughs> yes. 400 lunchboxes. Wow. Um, from the ch- Actually, from Twitter, we had a bunch of them. Um, I learned that you should be discussing this. Wait, what is this video? I didn't, I didn't pre-check pre- this. Uh, DJ Cumberland Cheeler. Oh, wow. This is a, okay, this is something I need to check out later, apparently. Uh, but there was a link uh, kind of included there. Uh, that fi- uh, uh, the, the Lanford Paul on Twitter learned that that five-star U.S. title match means nothing when the outcome is predictable. I disagree with that. Oh, uh, no. no we, 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 we talked about over that. In his- Mm-hmm. 10 minute match with Cena last night than he did in their entire feud beforehand. Holy face, if Rusev. Could, if he could reverse the AA into an accolade like that, yeah. why had he never done that before? Right, right. Uh, he also, it might come in handy. Bill, Bill Owens on there says uh, they need to have a better script like the old days. Um, Short sighted, looking for cheap pops. Uh, Gan Lanford Paul. Uh, AG, uh, what, what, they've been, what they've done to the WWE Tag Team Championship. Yeah. Yeah, some rough stuff there. So this is a weird video this guy sent. I, I need to look into that later. <laughs> That's odd. Uh, also from the Facebook, uh, from the Facebook, from the Facebook, where'd it Mine's go? Mine's on there. Don't read mine again. Uh, yeah, I, I remember yours from before. Daniel, <laughs> he says that the cancer fears Tim Daunce. Mm-hmm. I, I, we'll talk about AIW, but such an amazing moment to see him come back and do that match. Uh, also, that Stone Cold actually likes good beer. There's a picture of him with some with some fine beers there from Veronica out there in San Diego. Uh, Mr. Garza, the sip of craft beer for the millennial working man as a response there. Oh, we got some more hidden. Uh, Matt Collin has learned that whatever the question, the correct answer is always Cesaro, credit Corey Graves. <laughs> I agree yep. with that, Bobby's uh, and Alex uh, from out there in Long Beach, California. I learned that if uh, what's being reported is true, El Patron is the worst person in the world. It's the uh, one thing to skip a booking. It's another to skip a charity event. And the kind, uh, this one hit too close to home for me to be okay with him just saying, eh, I don't need to do this show. Um, I think if you tune into Indie Mayhem show, we're going to have some uh, follow-up on that. We'll be following that story. Uh, Amy can confirm in the chat room if, I, if, if that uh, worked out. But So definitely check out Indie Mayhem. Oh, uh, uh, Barbie, uh, Barbie Hayden is actually joining us on the Indie Mayhem show this week, and that should be fun in general. So, uh, I think Darius Cueto sent Matanza to his house. That's what I always say. I there think he couldn't get out of his house because some tons of us. <laughs> That'd be great if this turned into a gimmick, right? Uh, from Lucha Underground. Uh, Riz learned that he can't, uh, that he can spend an hour looking at John Cena vines. Uh, and there's a compilation from YouTube in the links. <laughs> you guys can check out on the Facebook uh, group for Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, and Garza learned that Roderick Strong and Zack Sabre Jr. had the match of the year on U.S. soil last weekend. Uh, I also learned that Rusev is so winning the breakup with Lana, it's only a matter of time before that snake woman comes crawling back to super athlete begging for love. Wow. Just testing out my boots. Wow, that was interesting. <laughs> that was really interesting. Um, but, uh... <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I, I got I'm told I have an email here. I'm getting an audible here. Show art. And uh, oh, geez, there's some good, there's some good stuff here. Uh, but, well, in the meantime, uh, while I try to bring this up, uh, I learned that uh, the human centipede was uh, was uh, attempted and 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 completed during the dudes on TV insane ten man tag on Friday night at AIW. This match included, and I can tell because they're all in the shot here. There's Samoa Joe at the head of Snake right there, uh, but also uh, the Young Bucks are a part of this uh, lineup. Uh, uh, Shima, uh, DJ Z, Ethan Carter is in there, Matt Cross on a Havoc, uh, Johnny Gargano, uh, and, uh, oh, jeez, Daniel, so, Daniel, Daniel, uh, uh, I can't remember his name from Super Indie for some reason. Uh, yeah, pretty good collection of talent. And and, and uh, as uh, Mr. Larusa also said to me uh, Sunday night, uh, that is a, a, a good depiction of the wrestling industry. Everybody with their head up each other's asses, except for Samoa Joe. <laughs> Alex Daniels, was it Alex? Daniels? Alex Daniels, thank you, thank yeah. you very much. I don't know, I, I blanked for the moment. Uh, tremendous, tremendous ten man tag. I got to see Ethan Carter in person back home in Cleveland with the TNA title in tow. 
be jealous. <sighs> great show. Great show. Seriously, when it comes on DVD, go buy that thing on Smart Mark. Uh, Absolution <laughs> 10 from AIW Wrestling. Uh, did you have something over there, Mike? Um, no. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I, I thought I heard I you say something. No, I didn't. Uh, but I, uh, I also learned that Paige gets really, really fired up on Tough Enough. I'm not going to spoil anything, but she really... Is it based on what she, what happened on Tough Talk last week? A oh. little bit, yeah. Okay, because the uh, best well, I, not not really. Now that I think about it, because, because okay, they, they didn't reference what happened. Just, Actually, we can talk about that here because that's not spoiler. Real, um, real, real quick, yeah, because uh, the best thing uh, last last week uh, on Tough Talk, they uh, some uh, Paige stepped up and said, "Hey, you know, there was this special." Uh, in Japan this weekend, I wrestled on it. Your judge, you know, uh, who here watched it? And one guy raised his hand. Mm-hmm. One person who, like, you can kind of tell that the other people on the show, a lot of them have not watched wrestling. Right. Recently. Right. They're not there like, for wrestling as wrestling fans. And I, think I don't that's a know problem. if they're not there. But, but they're not. They're not. Wrestling. Like, like, uh, okay, this is. Fans. Oh, Jesus. We're another half an hour here. We have a half an hour, though. But we had this discussion on the Indie Mayhem show is at what point, you know, if you're a wrestler, are you a fan of wrestling? And at what point, and especially if you're trying to be in WWE, you should be paying attention to what the WWE is doing. Mm-hmm. Especially mm-hmm. with this opportunity, you submitted your thing for tough enough. Maybe you got a call from that talent guy, as some people we know did. If you have been watching WWE, if you've not been, even if you're, I, I, you know, if, if you can't afford it or don't have the time, I understand. But otherwise, if your your overall goal is to be in the WWE and you're not studying shit for nine ninety nine a month, especially the people on the show, they have the network streaming mm-hmm. in their barracks. For free, right? Mm-hmm. If I was um, a dude, if I was on that show, I would not have anything but WWE Network on in the house, like I do here. Except I'd skip Total Divas and put something on on demand, uh, like an old oh, NWA no, pay per view or something. No, but Divas even learn you. You learn about the backstage stuff, Sork. There was a picture of them. There was a picture in of them in their bus, and they were watching themselves. <laughs> they were watching the episode of Tough Enough from last week. I wow. was like, get over yourselves. Right, right, right. Yeah. Hey, from the uh, this was emailed over something uh, posted on the Twitter feeds uh, uh, that would make us feel better about the artwork. This is from Wife of the Show, Missy. Uh, who runs the world? Oh, the girls. Oh, I love that it. That is amazing. That is I a tremendous it. picture. Well, we we have we have art for the epi- for this episode. Well, I want I I wouldn't do that unless I could credit the original artist. So if if you can track okay. that down for me, um, I'll at least credit them in the art in the fan in the artwork. So I, don't, yeah, I feel I feel weird about taking that. But anyways, <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, uh, about about the tough enough kids. Like, um, you don't have to be a huge fan of wrestling to be good at wrestling. Mm-hmm. You don't have to be because there have been guys who have admittedly not been a fan of the sport that came in and did some really positive things. Mm -hmm. Um, One of those guys that comes to mind is Bill Goldberg. Like, he admittedly was not a fan of wrestling. Right, right. And he's honest about it, too. Yeah, but, I mean, as long as you commit to it, you don't have to be a fan and know the history. But if you're on a reality show where the people who are voting for you are fans of the WWE, you should try and, you know, not insult our intelligence because we're going to vote for people who we feel want to be there and guys who know the product and can reference it and stayed up at five in the morning to watch Beast in the East like a lot of us did. Mm-hmm. That, those are the people we're going to flock. We're going to flock to, and those are the people we're going to vote to keep on. Right. Like, that's just how it works. You can do whatever you want to. I'm not gonna... uh, from the well, chat, Eamon's know, also on there. Uh, uh, he he said uh, the, 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 the the one one. I think he's saying that that uh, Del Rio did uh, apologize on Twitter for the situation, and we'll we'll look into it. Um, but uh, da, 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 da. also, he learned that re- uh, wrestling human centipede and what a bounce that was. Uh, the Candice LeRae uh, taking the knees from uh, Cedric Alexander was amazing uh, to see in person. Um, but 
uh, yeah, uh, but that was a discussion for Indie Mayhem show. I think we got everybody's uh, what they learned this week. Everybody in the chat room, everybody on the Facebook, thank you so much for contributing to the show. Uh, Mad Mike, he hosts, uh, co-hosts, etc. A variety of extra shows here on the Wrestling Mayhem Show channel, WrestlingMayhemShow.com to see all of those. Midweek more, uh, the Tough Enough and uh, Total Divas wrap-ups. And, yes, uh, of course, you join me on the uh, Raw wrap-up, and you've been around other podcasts as well on the network. Hey, you know, I dabble a little here, a little there. So I, also, I do everything. a former member of the WWE staff. Yes, indeed. I've told I need to spout credentials more, so we're going to do that. We're going to do that. <laughs> uh, Taking some advice. But anyways, also, Bobby F. J-Town. He's at Bobby Hi. F. J-Town on the Twitters as well. He hosts a podcast oh, called Boss Battle. He hosts, he hosts Boss Battle on the insertcoinbegin.com. So please go check that out. Some fine, fine video game talks, some fun stuff. And sh- genius. <laughs> Wrestle genius <laughs> on the Twitters. Um, I don't know. You doing anything you want to plug? I have nothing to plug whatsoever. Um, I just want to say I'm still to date the best looking guest you've ever had on the show. So, other than that, I have no claim to fame whatsoever. Okay. Okay, I'll leave that. It's just a good thing Alan has a guest anymore. (laughs) Special celebrity co host. Okay, okay, Mojo Rawley, Dana Brooke, (laughs) Matt Mike. (laughs) (laughs) Yes! Yes! Yes. Wow. <laughs> on that note, thank you everybody for joining us. Thank you for joining us in the chat room. Live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com if you want to join us here every Tuesday night around 9 p.m. Eastern time for three hours at least of wrestling talk. Oh boy. Um, and so much more. Wrestlingmayhemshow.com for the show for uh, links to subscribe and, uh, and and check out our friends and support the show any way you can through Patreon, through uh, teachers, through uh, indie wrestling, whatever the case may be. Um, uh, uh, big thanks to uh, Missy for doing the show notes and tweets all night long at the late hour. And, uh, and all you guys for joining us in general. Just thanks. The Mayhem Nation is strong and getting stronger and I really, really appreciate everybody out there uh, and helping us and just He's having fun talking wrestling with us. Let's keep it going. Uh, so until next time, mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.